so good afternoon everyone <laughs> I hope my slides are somewhere so yeah um my name is felix Krimer. i'm from the max planck institute of biogeochemistry in jena and i'm uh, going to talk about mapping forest change in europe based on sentinel one time series so um, this, one, this is a study where we are scaling up an algorithm that we tested on a very local scale. And we wanted to um, test how to scale up to um, regional and continental scales. Um, for that, we moved the algorithm to the data by using a virtual machine with 64 cores and 256 gigabyte of RAM at the EODC at, in Vienna. This was um, part of a C scale um, project study. And I'm also funded by the NFDI for Earth, um, German research data infrastructure for the earth sciences. Um, so, first, a quick overview of the algorithm. So, we start with the Sentinel 1. Uh, pre-processed data that is provided by the Wolfgang Wagner group and is in the ECRI 7 grid. Then we compute the recurrence quantification analysis trend for June of the previous year to June of the next year. So we have two years of data. And then um, we mask the forest areas based on a forest map on the same Sentinel-1 data. And then we threshold this RQA trend, and then we cluster um, all uh, everything that is, so we discard everything which is lower than 30 pixels, which is roughly one hectare in size. And so first to explain recurrence quantification analysis, this is based on a tool called recurrence plot. So the idea is to compare every, pix every time series against itself and see where are time steps which are similar to each other. So um, these are just ex exemplary um, time series. So you have a sum of two sine curves with different frequencies. Then you have these clear line patterns and some circles in between. Then in the middle, you have something which is more similar to a deforestation event where you have a step function with noise. And um, there we have these uh, clear patterns of a lot of recurrences uh, in this part of the time series, and then no recurrence to the other part, and the same in the, in the lower part of the time series. Or you could have um, time series with trends where you have um, a loss of recurrency in, at the edges. And, um, now, now you can not only look at these uh, recurrence plots, but you could also um, compute the actual, uh, you can compute statistics out of it, either the recurrence rates or the number of recurrent time steps, or what we're using in this study is the recurrence trend, which is basically the, um, you, you have these main diagonal, which is every point against itself, and you have, you have these other diagonals, and we, compute the number of occurrences on, on these diagonals and correlate the, the distance to the main diagonal. So it's a measure of how much depends the similarity of two time spots by the, to the distance between, between these points in time. And um, as I said, we um, tested this on a local scale. So here's an example of, on the left, a deforestation event. And um, in, in red, there's the average time series of all of these of f five by five pixels. And below there's the recurrence plot for that. And on the right, there's a stable forest, which is um, basically just random points in the recurrence analysis. And you can see that there's a good distinction between these deforestations to um, the surrounding forest. And um, so um, we, for the, for the scaling, we use the Sentinel-1 data set, with, which is basically a 330 terabytes of pre-processed data globally. 
Um, therefore, you don't want to download all of this. So um, we use this as is on the EODC cluster. The chunking is not ideal for time series analysis because it's basically one map per Sentinel-1 scene. So, um, but uh, I, I wanted to avoid to rechunk the whole data set. So we, we take the data as is and handle with it, um, handle it then. And um, we're using Julia for the out of core processing. So we're using the Yaxarays package, which I um, showed already on Wednesday, which um, enables us to efficiently handle these large data sets. It's, it takes the chunking into account and it's very easy to distribute and multi-thread the whole computations. And then when we did this, we had the problem that we ran into a large bottleneck for the RAM because the distributed computing failed with an out of memory error. And just doing this computation sequentially is just too slow. And there was a lot of time spent on garbage collection. So we improved the, the trend comp computation by before that in a, in a naive approach, we computed the recurrence plot, which is a sparse matrix of size of the time series by size of the time series. And actually for the computation of the recurrence trend, we don't need this intermediate um, recurrence plot. So we discarded this and this reduced the allocations and the memory consumptions by a lot, which then enabled us to actually scale this up. So um, in the original um, algorithm, you see that there's a basically a linear trend for the number of allocations. And then we find um, you only have this steps, which is basically at every power of two length increase of the length of the time series, you have an increase in allocations by one or two. And you also see this in the computation time that this, this is off by a factor of 300 and the memory consumption is lower by a factor of roughly 1,000. So, um, this helped a lot, and I think that um, it's always good to first improve the algorithm before we start uh, throwing more compute power on, on our problems. And so now I want to shortly um, show, the, show the results we got so far. So this is just um, for Germany, because the um, European data set is still stuck in, in post-processing. So this is the first change map for the tiles which cover Germany in 2018. So you see a, lot, a bit of deforestation here. You see some, de some forest change in the Alps and you see a lot of um, forest change in Poland and in the border to the Czech Republic. And um, if we zoom in, for example, to the Harz Mountains in Germany, which has been heavily uh, affected by bark beetle outbreaks in the last years. You see that, so the different colors are different years from 2018 to 2021. And you see um, a lot of deforestation or a lot of forest change happening, happening here. And now um, the next step is to actually look into what is it, um, how, how valid are the, is the data set and so on. And, you also see um, very small scale um, things like this is a highway construction in Germany where we actually find the, or where I found the news articles and the construction dates, um, which overlap quite nicely with uh, my data there. And also if we compare, the, compare this to the global forest watch data as a first indicator, um, there's quite some overlap um, between those. And so I want to um, come to the conclusion. So the scaling of the data now works. So it's um, suitable to do this computation. It could actually be done um, all over the globe. So it's um, basically tile agnostic and we, can, we could just run it anywhere. Um, we had to minimize the memory usage by a better algorithm to design to actually achieve this um, computation. And I think that the Sentinel-1 based uh, forest change maps give a good complementary or might give a good complementary information to optical based uh, change detection 
algorithms. And so in the outlook, I, I want to compare this to Sentinel-1 based or in general optical based first change maps. I have to do a proper validation and I also want to finish the post -processing, processing of the data set for the whole Europe. And with that, I'm finished. Thank you. Thank you so much, Felix. Um, do we have questions? Okay, thanks, Felix. Uh, I'm sorry, I need to read your paper, but can you explain again this kind of like recurrence metrics concepts? I think I didn't get it, so I don't know if you can explain again. That'd be great, thanks. Yes. So the idea is you have this time series, right? So here, this, this is the this is a five by five matrix of of time series in a deforestation area, and basically for this to to get to this um, recurrence matrix, you compare every time step against every other time step in the same matrix. So in the middle, so this this black line in the middle is just every time step against itself. So they are the same, of course, and then um, you basically have some equality threshold where you say these time steps are the same. And then um, if they are in the threshold, you have a black dot. And if not, you have a white dot. And then you get these, um, these patterns. And depending on how your time series is and where's your drop or how's your seasonality, you can have also have seasonalities, then you would have more so something more like this. Um, you get these different um, recurrence plots. And then you can derive uh, statistics out of these recurrence plots. The nice thing is that these, these statistics take the order of the time series into account compared to doing just standard statistics on the, whole, on the time series directly. Any other question? Hi, Felix. Uh, nice work. Uh, uh, I just wanted to ask you uh, uh, how you then detect the exact date of uh, change of the break time series. Uh, is it, uh, uh... I don't. So um, basically, I, I assign. So I take I take one year, and then I take the half year before and half year after this year, and I basically assign if there's a if I detect a change in the time series, I assign it to this year. But there can be, there are some, there might be some overlaps between the, the years so that you have basically the same pixel in the 2018 change and in the 2019 change, depending a bit on where the change exactly happens. So it's not a, it's not a perfect timing, but it's more an indicator of, okay, there is something happened, there happened something in this time span. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? None? Okay, thank you so much, Felix.